Hi, I'm Thorsten Rahm, an authorized cube trainer from Basiscom. Welcome to this learning video based on material taken from the Qt Essentials training course. With these videos, we'll be giving you key insights into Qt as well as demonstrate the type of in depth training available in the classroom based Qt Essentials training course. Let's have a look at layout management. Layouts are classes that are used to place and resize widgets. For top-level widgets, you can use the methods move or resize or set geometry to move the widget or resize the widget or to set the whole geometry at once. You can see this in this nice example with the Q widget and the Q checkbox, where these widgets get, move, get resized to the size of 400 times 400 and where the checkbox gets moved to the position 10, 10. The nice thing about layouts is that the Q layout takes care of applying the position and the size to the widget. The advantages with this approach is that it works with different languages, no matter whether you've got a very verbose language, like for example French or an Italian language, where the label of the button usually is a bit shorter, um, the text that is displayed, for example, on a button would get shown on the button no matter what. And this also works with different dialogue sizes or with different font sizes. Um, for example, for big font sizes and small font sizes, no matter how big your font is, usually the button would uh, fit into the whole layout. So this is a lot better to maintain than basically manually managing the size or the position of a widget. The disadvantage is that you need to think about your layout first. But this is not really a disadvantage since you have to think about how your widgets are arranged anyways in order to provide a good user experience and uh, easy to use application. So thinking about the layout is not really a disadvantage. Since the layout already basically manages the size and the geometry of a widget, uh, it's not really encouraged to call the set geometry, the resize or move, move method on widgets which are handled by the layout already. Instead, you could, for example, override the size hint or the minimum size hint, um, but that usually rather rarely happens. Or you could set the um, a fixed size using set fixed size, or you can describe the minimum size or the maximum size that a widget is supposed to hold. There are several layout manager classes that you can choose from. The most popular probably QH box layout, which lines up widgets horizontally, or QV box layout, which lines up uh, widgets vertically. Those two layout types basically work in one dimension. The Q grid layout works in two dimensions, so you get a grid of widgets. Then there's Q form layout, which lines up uh, set a pair of label and widget into columns and still manages to display um, the label uh, in line with the user interface guidelines of the platform. And finally there is QStack layout which arranges widgets in a stack and where only the, the topmost widget is visible. QHbox layout and QVbox layout are layout classes which are quite often used since in many cases you can line up widgets horizontally or vertically. Um, the QHbox and QVbox layout they divide the space into boxes. Each managed and each managed widgets um, fits in one box. You can see that nicely in the screenshot in the center where you've got a QHbox layout and on the right where you've got a QV box layout, which each hold uh, push buttons. And uh, at the bottom, you can see the source code 
which, create, which creates uh, such a layout of Q button widgets. First, you create the containment window. Here, it's a Q widget. Then, you create the Q push buttons that you want to put into the box layouts uh, one by one. And finally, you create the layout. In this case, it's a horizontal box layout. And you add then the widgets using the add widget method to the layout one by one. And finally, you set the layout, the horizontal layout that you've created with a set layout method of the window. More complex is the Q grid layout, which you should choose carefully. In this example on the right, you can see uh, two buttons on the top which in this case get um, added through, again, through the add widget uh, method, which has uh, the first button as the first parameter. Um, the row that is supposed to be chosen is taken as a second parameter, and the column is supposed to be chosen as the third parameter. Then there's the capability to span rows or to span columns, like uh, you maybe know from uh, HTML where you can do the same stuff uh, in tables. In this case, in this example, we have the second row where we want to span the column. And here we uh, execute the add widget method of the layout and pass uh, the third button as the first parameter, um, the first row as a second parameter, um, the zero column as a third parameter, and then we basically tell the grid not to span uh, the row, uh, but to span the column instead. And finally, we apply the layout to the widget by executing set layout uh, on the window uh, widget. Additionally, you can have a minimum column width and a minimum row height using the methods set column minimum width and the method set row minimum height. There is no need to specify rows and columns before adding children. Qform layout is a class that is usually used uh, for settings uh, dialogs where you have basically a pair of a label and a second widget. The nice thing about Qform layout is that it respects the style guide of individual platforms. You can see that nicely on the bottom where you have uh, basically the same form layout with clean look style and max style. The clean look style for example, the, lay, uh, the labels on the left get left adjusted and the buttons basically fill the whole space that is available. And the max style, it looks differently. There, the labels are right adjusted and the push buttons just choose as much space as is needed to display the text. The source code that is needed to um, establish this kind of result for the form layouts is displayed in the center of the screen. Let's have a look at some layout terms. Um, the layout and its properties are basically described through the box model. So we have, a con we have content margins, which can be set through the method set content margins, and where you take then the left, the top, the right, and the bottom margin as a parameter. You can see that nicely in the uh, image on the right uh, bottom side uh, where the margin is that dark gray box around those three widgets. Between the three widgets you can see the spacing. Um, this is the space reserved between the widgets. You can add the spacing uh, to the box layout uh, through add spacing and taking the size as a parameter. Additionally, you can set a stretch. Stretch is uh, the ratio, the relative size factor uh, that is used between 
a sizing indications for the widgets. For example, uh, you can specify the stretch, for example, using add widget with the stretch being the second parameter or add stretch uh, where the stretch is the parameter, set row stretch uh, where you can set a stretch to the row or set column stretch where you can set uh, where you can define the stretch for the column. Then there are things like struts which limit the perpendicular box dimension. For example, it's the height for a cube H-box layout that is being limited or the width for a QV box layout. So this is something that you can that only makes sense for box layouts. It doesn't make sense for grid layouts, so it's only available for box layouts. You can apply the minimum and maximum and fixed size uh, to the layouts. And uh, very important, you can create nested layouts. So, as you can see on the bottom right, there are several uh, box layouts nested inside of each other. And that is something that I usually prefer using over grid layouts, since it's most of the time easier to understand in terms of code. Another important topic with widgets and its layouts is the size policy. The size policy describes how a widget reacts to resizing. We can see this in this uh, piece of example code where we take the size policy from the widget and store it inside the QSize policy object policy. Then we take our object that stores the size policy and apply the set horizontal policy method to it, taking the QSize policy fixed enum as a parameter. And now that we've modified the policy object, we set it again to the widget by applying set size policy um, to the widget object with a policy of a, with a policy as a parameter. As we've seen, the size policy can be set per direction, it can either be set horizontally or vertically. For button-like widgets, it's usual to set the size policy so that um, the button may be stretched horizontally, but so that the height of the button is kept fixed. It's similar with other comparable uh, widgets like, for example, QLine or QProgress bar. Then there are widgets which provide scroll bars. For those widgets, uh, we can use additional space or we can have less uh, space, less size than the size hint describes. The size hint recommends the size for the widget and usually if we specify the size policy we do it relative to the size hint. This can be nicely seen in this table where in the first row we have the enums that a size policy can take and then we have the size in and then we have um, the capabilities that the widget has due to, this, due to the size policy. For example, for a fixed policy, um, the size in is the, basically the only acceptable uh, size. So the widget can never grow or shrink. For a minimum size, for a minimum size policy, um, the size hand is minimal sufficient. This means that the widget can expand but it has no advantage of being larger. For a maximum size policy, the size, the size hint is maximum, that means that the widget can shrink. For a preferred Q size policy, the size hint is basically the best thing, that means that the widget can shrink but there's no advantage of being larger. Then there's the minimum expanding policy. This means that the size pin is minimum and that the widget can use extra space. For an expanding Q size policy, 
the size hint is taken as a sensible size. This means that the widget can grow and shrink. In order to demonstrate the properties of layouts, we open the Qt Designer. We create a new widget and then we add a push button by drag and drop to our widget. We change the text of the push button and then we copy our push button and insert two further instances of it and change the text of those buttons. Now we give our new form a test drive. We preview it and we resize the widget which contains the buttons. As you can see, since we don't have a layout, the buttons don't move and they don't resize automatically. Now we apply a horizontal box layout to the whole form. And as you can see, our buttons have rearranged in a horizontal row. Now we change the size policy for the height of one of the buttons. We change it to minimum. So in this case the size hint is interpreted as the minimum value for the button and the button can grow. Now we do this to the rest of our buttons. And we apply a maximum size policy to the horizontal uh, size policy of our buttons. As you can see, the buttons have shrunken horizontally. And this is because the size hint, basically and with maximum size policy, is interpreted as the maximum value that a button can have. Now let's go back and let's have a look at the layout and its properties. Here you can see the properties of the HBOX layout that is used in this case. And you can see that it's possible to modify the content margin. We choose the top, the top margin and change its values. And as you can see, by changing the value of the top margin, the top margin is changed. Now we change the spacing and you can see how the spacing increases and decreases. And finally we control the layout stretch. The layout stretch we give the values 1, 2 and 1. You can see how the ratio becomes 1 to 1. We hope you enjoyed the sample of our Qt Essentials training course. For the full experience, including labs, QAs and additional info, we recommend you attend the full multi-day Qt Essentials training course available from Basiscom or any one of the Qt training partners. For full details, check out qt.nokia.com. Thanks for watching.